I think I'm going to say something that will calm you down now <laughs> to start. Uh, unfortunate fact is that one out of three uh, persons in Sweden will develop cancer during their lifetime. And if you know somebody that has gone through uh, that unfortunate news of cancer diagnosis, you know that that will follow up with a very hard uh, treatment, harsh treatment of chemotherapy, irradiation, difficult operations. And even with this huge effort of uh, treatment, many times we can't save the patient. But imagine if we could uh, use vaccines, if we could, after the diagnosis of cancer, to vaccinate a pe person with a cancer. Vaccines are great. They are given to millions of people around the world uh, all the time. They're very non-toxic. They save lives. Uh, and vaccines are actually training our body's own immune system to fight uh, the disease. So I'm going to tell you a story uh, today from uh, our research, from how our very basic research uh, uh, has all of a sudden gives us possibilities to develop cancer drugs and uh, future cancer therapies. My own interest in, uh, in nature started very early on. A few years back I uh, met my daycare mom and she said to me that I was a bit of a odd kid. And I was, what do you mean odd kid? And she said, well, if I got to go and choose the book that she would read to me, I went to the bookshelf and took the Encyclopedia of Animal Kingdom <laughs> <laughs> when I was five years old. So I guess my n interest in nature started very early on. And that has led me to study uh, biology, molecular biology, chemistry, and finally focus on proteins. So we now, our laboratory, focus on uh, studying proteins. Proteins are the building block of uh, your bodies. We are built out of proteins. They carry out the in, uh, important functions. Uh, immune system is functioning by the proteins. Uh, it's a chemistry of life. So if the proteins are the chemistry of life, then the DNA is actually the instruction manual. So in all of your millions of the cells that you have, you have uh, the whole instruction manual captured in the cell uh, nucleus. So each of us has uh, three meters of uh, DNA in our, um, in our bodies. And one of the greatest projects that we have had in science have been the Human Genome Project. And that was actually tuned to uh, the one of the main questions was to find what are the building blocks of our bodies? What are the proteins that we have? So this is the sort of basic research project that we started to work in, in my, my group. What are the sort of protein building blocks? So, and how can we use that? To, uh, I will then tell you how that will uh, end up in something that we can use in cancer patients. So, if we scale the three meters of DNA that you have in your every single cell into the distance between uh, Stockholm and Gothenburg, that will be about uh, 470 uh, kilometers. And only 1.5% of that DNA stretch is coding proteins. And that was a big revelation that we found in the Human Genome Project. Now, what does, what does the 1.5% mean if we scale that into the, the distance between Stockholm and Gothenburg? That's only seven kilometers. We're still in Stockholm. So all of our building blocks and the instructions to build them, they are in this seven kilometers, but they are not in a continuous stretch. So if we uh, look at the genome, 
the average building block size, the instruction is uh, about 30 centimeters stretch in the distance between the Stockholm and Gothenburg. And they look very similar. The road looks very similar, but we need to find these 30 uh, centimeters long stretches in order to understand what building blocks we have. Now, how we have gone about it as a scientific community is that we have compared our genome with the mouse genome, with the monkey genome, with the yeast genome. And we are looking at the similarities and saying that these areas are conserved. So they, are, they might be important and there might be the building blocks. So we have been predicting where the building blocks are based on the DNA information. But remember that the building blocks are actually making proteins. And in my laboratory, we focus on proteins. So we asked ourselves, why predict when you can measure? So we actually developed a, uh, a tool uh, to use the protein information. So here I have a representation of the same map, but in a different way. The red dot here in the, uh, in the big uh, yellow background, that's the 1.5% of the, the coding region. And then the rest of the DNA is uh, illustrated by the yellow circle. So we took a proteome-based uh, method that guides us through that big yellow area to find the building blocks. Is there remaining building blocks? And that we developed uh, a few years back. And the Human Genome Project was sort of announced 2003. And so we were uh, 10 years late. So we were thinking, can we still find protein coding genes by going back from the proteins to the genome? So we scanned the whole yellow circle to find proteins. And we were very excited with that first results that we got. Could we find any? And in the first study, we could find about 100 new regions that actually codes protein. So now you're thinking, how on earth can this cure any cancer patient? It's a basic research about how is uh, our protein built up? What are the constitutions of the protein? So the, the explanation how that can happen, how that can be turned into the cancer uh, research tool is uh, the fact that can in cancer, the DNA is damaged. That's why the sun that you all experience today can cause cancer, because the UV radiation can cause DNA damage. That's why the cigarette smoke can cause cancer, because the cigarette smoke can uh, damage the DNA. And if the DNA codes proteins, then the damaged DNA can cause uh, altered and damaged proteins. Now, in every one of us, we have actually a great system to uh, seek and destroy altered or damaged proteins. And that is called immune system. So every time a virus infects you or bacteria will infect you, uh, the immune system will uh, recognize the non-self proteins, the different proteins. And that is actually the thing that gives us a handle to, uh, to start developing cancer vaccines. So if we can turn this tool to study tumors, then we have a possibility to start developing cancer vaccines. So what we did is that we actually took a tumor sample and we did the same type of analysis on the tumor samples and started to see, can we see proteins that, we don't, uh, that don't belong to the genome, that should not be there, that are specific because of the DNA damage that has happened in the cancer. And in the first study, we could already see tens of proteins that are tumor specific. And here you see a uh, microscopic picture of the tumor. And what you can see here is tumor cells, but you can also see uh, smaller, darker cells, and they are inflammatory cells or immune cells. And those are the fighters of our body that can clear cancer. And the uh, 
tumor immunology field has learned known long time that uh, the, there is immune response to a tumor, but sometimes the tumors uh, escape the immune response. So if we can now take these tumor samples and learn what type of uh, cancer-specific proteins there are using the method, that is a starting point to start developing vaccine. Because the, the vaccines will train the immune system, so we can then take uh, the tumor sample and uh, analyze that, generate a vaccine and give a personalized cancer vaccine to boost the immune system so it can recognize the tumor cells and start killing them. So let me leave you with a vision how I imagine that the uh, cancer treatment is on 10 years. In 10 years time, we have been analyzing lots of tumors, and when I'm saying we, I mean the scientific community, not only our group, but there will be uh, lots of groups analyzing tumor samples. We, can, we start getting knowledge what type of uh, novel proteins the cancer damage causes, and we can generate a battery of vaccines. So when the patient comes to the clinic, we will take sample of that particular tumor, try to understand what type of uh, cancer-specific uh, proteins there are, and then we will take the suitable uh, uh, vaccine from the shelf that will be in every hospital and immunize that uh, patient with that vaccine. Maybe we need to still operate away the tumor and give other type of treatments and then give the vaccine to give a durable treatment effect. And if we don't have the personalized vaccine, then we can use the same method that we uh, found the proteins uh, already, analyze that sample, learn what particular proteins are in that patient, and generate individualized uh, cancer vaccine for that patient. So how are we going to make this happen? It's going to be a uh, big effort from the scientific community, both in uh, academia and industry. And I'm illustrated here by this hand. Our method is a one uh, piece of this, building this ant hill. And uh, there will be uh, lots of researchers in cancer field, in proteomics, in immunology field, putting their uh, act together and uh, making the future cancer therapy much less toxic and much more efficient. And all of you can be part of that by supporting science, by engaging yourself into the science. And I think this is going to be very, very interesting period. And I hope we can do this sooner than later because the cancer patients will need this. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.